About a year ago, I made a video titled Impact Wrestling Fell Off, and it got quite the mixed response, and to be honest, since then, a lot has happened in Impact, and also, my opinion on Impact has also changed since then. Today, I'm going to be discussing Impact Wrestling and answering the question of has Impact Wrestling fell off? Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already right this second, and let's get in to the video. So before I begin, I want to give a quick and brief history of my fandom with Impact Wrestling because I think it's important to do this just so people don't think I'm just some random guy that's trying to grift and just get a couple clicks out of like shitting on Impact or something like that. I feel like a lot of people got that impression from the last video, but I'll tell you this right now. I have been an Impact fan since I was aged 9. I mean, technically, it wasn't called Impact then, it was called TNA back then. And if you go look in the depths of my channel, you'll know that at one point in time, my channel was exclusively a TNA channel. I made videos about TNA. I am a TNA fan. I've been watching this company for so long, and when they switched into Impact, originally following from TNA, I still follow with them, and even through all the GFW stuff, that was kind of around the area where I did start to drop off. And I kind of stopped watching when it first started airing on like Pop TV or the Pursuit channel when they used to air on the channel for hunting. But when I really started to get back into Impact Wrestling again was when Tessa Blanchard was on the scene. When she was having her feud with Sammy Callahan and OVE and won the world title. Obviously, she then got exposed for being a racist. But regardless, I still stuck with Impact and stuck with them through until Tessa got obviously fired and until COVID took place. And the COVID period for Impact Wrestling ended up actually being a really hot period for the company. Going into Slammiversary 2020, there was so much hype around the company because they were teasing all the WWE releases debuting and all these returns at the show. And a lot of returns did take place. And a lot of debuts did take place. A lot of awesome ones. You had the Motor City Machine Guns returning. My favorite tag team ever. You had Deonna Perazzo debut to defeat Jordan Grace in what was an awesome match. And then, of course, you had EC3 returning in the main event, which, you know, in hindsight wasn't great. But at the time, I was going crazy. And I just feel like this hype at the time is something that Impact, following this show, completely failed at following up on. The AEW partnership was good for a bit while it lasted, but it eventually kind of became aware to everyone that this was a very one-sided partnership, you know, Impact, while they did get Kenny Omega on TV a couple of times and they had Christian Cage appearing regularly, they didn't really get too much out of this AEW partnership, it should be said. And then it was one random day seven months ago that I decided to tune into Impact Wrestling for the first time in a long while, just out of curiosity, and it was that episode where Bobby Fish did his, folks, where's the lie? Uh, and that is when I turned off Impact and made that video about Impact Wrestling falling off and at that time I really just had no desire to ever tune in to Impact Wrestling again, honestly. That was until the build to Under Siege 2023, the Impact Wrestling pay-per-view that has just passed by. I got an interest to watch this show due to some of the people that were appearing on this show. First of all, Subculture were announced to appear on the show facing ABC. Uh, I'm a big fan of the British wrestling scene. Mandrews, Webster, Danny Luna, I've followed all of them since they've been on the scene. And Mandrews obviously was in TNA back in the day after he won British Boot Camp. So I wanted to see all them in Impact. As well as that Diona Perazzo versus Jordan Grace, the rematch from their awesome match at Slammiversary 2020 was happening, and they absolutely delivered. And just to quickly give my thoughts on Under Siege 2023, a really, really great show. Really great show. Like top to bottom, I was pleasantly surprised. And yeah, this show has really helped change my opinion on Impact because watching this show seemed like an entirely different Impact to the Impact I was watching eight months ago when I first made that video. In that video, one of my biggest points I made of why Impact Wrestling fell off was mainly down to the star power, specifically in the main event scene. And I compared the stars of TNA to the stars of Impact, which even in that video I acknowledged was quite unfair to do. And I still acknowledge now, it's very unfair to do. But at the same time, it could also be argued that TNA and Impact's failure to keep a lot of these stars is their fault. But also, the landscape of wrestling is entirely different right now. I understand it's probably unfair to compare the wrestlers to the wrestlers of TNA. But that doesn't change the fact that the main event scene in my video eight months ago when I was talking about it, the main event scene for Impact was just 
really nothing. I feel like at that time, they had Josh Alexander, and that was it. I mean, at that time, he was defending against Bobby Fish and Buddy Ray, and that, that was just a joke. Let's be real. But now... Uh, Josh Alexander has obviously vacated the title due to injury after a fantastic reign with the belt and Impact have gone ahead and put the belt on Steve Macklin, which is just such a brilliant decision It's a guy who in my last video on this topic I said is a guy that should be in the main event scene and even better I also said that guys like Alex Shetty Chris Sabin should also be in the main event scene Guess what the world title match is next month Macklin versus Shelley just perfect perfect Bully Ray has kind of fell down the main event as well. He's not really in that main event scene anymore. Seems as though he's being used as more of a nostalgia act, which is absolutely the way to go with him. And yeah, this feels like a good fresh start for the main event scene. They took a risk putting it on Macklin rather than putting it on like an established guy. And it was completely the right decision. And I think a Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin feud should go pretty well when Josh Alexander does return to the company. Another point that I made in my last video is I felt that Impact had an identity crisis. They never really knew what they wanted to be. Impact and even TNA has always been a mix of serious wrestling, comedic wrestling, hardcore. It's a mix of styles. But I felt like at the time, the main kind of serious side of Impact was their main event scene. And like I said, I felt like at that time, they didn't have the star power. But yes, again, now the main event scene is a lot better. And now overall, Impact have just a much better all-round good show. And they absolutely have the roster to deliver that all-around show that mixes all these different styles of wrestling. And I feel like they're doing that perfectly because... I feel like there was a certain time where the show just didn't link together that well. The structure of the show every week just felt off to me. And to be honest, I feel like right now there's a bit of buzz around Impact, mainly due to Trinity debuting in Impact recently, which is an absolutely huge get for the women's division. The women's division, the part of Impact, which I think has never changed in quality, without a doubt, has always been the best part of Impact Wrestling, has been the women's division, and it still is to me. Diona Perrazzo is one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. She's currently the three-time knockouts champion, currently holding the belt right now, having just defended it against George. Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace, who is now reportedly gone from the company, which is a big loss for them, but I trust that Deonna can hold down the fort. And now we've got Trinity in there, who is going to really help lighten up this women's division and add a bit of spark to it, add a bit of glow to the women's division. That's the word I was looking for. I couldn't get it in my head. And on the topic of Jordan Grace leaving, the only problem Impact Wrestling are really going to face and kind of always have faced is that they need to do what they can to retain these talent. I think when Deonna Perrazzo goes, that's when it's going to start to get maybe a little bit shaky for the women's division. But over the years, Impact have proved that they've been readily able to replace a lot of these wrestlers that have got signed. Deonna Perrazzo won the title on her first match. And that first match was the match of the year. She literally proved herself on the very first night. So I don't doubt Impact's abilities to be able to replace these stars in the women's division. But again, to me, I think the most important thing is making sure the main event scene is staying how it is right now. Because I think this is the best that the main event scene has looked in Impact for quite a while. Like, this is the most excited I've been about the Impact World title since Tessa Blanchard was holding it. And that's because you have these guys like Steve Macklin, like Josh Alexander, who are holding down the fort in the main event of Impact Wrestling. You look at WWE, they have their own guys in the main event event scene, McIntyre, Roman Reigns, these guys that you associate as main eventers that they created. The same with AEW, with Omega and the Young Bucks and Hangman Page. And Impact didn't really have that for a bit of time. You know, you had the AEW partnership where Omega and Page were holding the titles, or Christian Cage, sorry, not Page. These aren't their guys. But now, we're in a place where the main event scene is the likes of Macklin and Alexander and Alex Shelley. These are Impact Wrestling guys. But yeah, to finally answer the question of the video, has Impact Wrestling fell off? Yes, absolutely, of course it has. We're comparing it to TNA. TNA literally had Kurt Angle, Sting, Jeff Hardy, etc. It's pretty much impossible for Impact Wrestling to, fake, to, to at all match that in stars or whatever, just because of the landscape of the industry. So of course it's fallen off. But, 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 it has fallen off in comparison to how it was as TNA. If we're looking at Impact Wrestling purely in the Impact Wrestling era, say from 2018 when it became Impact Wrestling until now, I'd say Impact Wrestling is in one of the better places it's been since it changed its name to Impact Wrestling.